Today I wanted to talk about the use of weblog information to supplement network traces. So I'm going to break this into a number of parts. Uh, in this first part I just want to introduce the subject. So I have a weblog here and I can open it with uh, something like Notepad and you can see the content. So this is from a Microsoft IIS server. So this would be used for say websites or for web services. Um, you can see uh, Equally, you would see uh, these logs in both cases. And um, you can see some of the information that's in here. So up here in this fields uh, row, we have the titles of each column. And each column is actually just separated by a space character. You'll see that there are things like the uh, URI stem, so such as this one here, my app. Uh, we have query strings where they exist. If the value doesn't exist, you'll see a, just a hyphen. Um, but we do have some uh, query strings in here, which we'll see later. And then we have, interestingly, the IP address of the client. So you can see that we have here the IP address of a client. Um, this value here, obviously, is the um, server port, which... Um, is probably going to be 80 or 443. It's not really of great use, but it's just confirmation that you're looking at the right entries. And then as, as we keep going across, we see things like status information. So 200 is a 200 OK. But the one I'm really interested in is this last column, and it's a value called time taken. And that really is the response time for a page. So you can see there we have quite a slow response time there. That's a value in milliseconds. Uh, so it's 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds, which is pretty slow. So uh, that gives you an idea of the content of the log. And we'll look at ways that we can explore the log in a second. But I think also what we should do is look at how we actually get the log in the first place. So here I'm connected into uh, an IIS server um, in our lab. And if I open up Windows Explorer, I can start to uh, work my way across the um, file system. The, the directory that we're interested in is this one here called inet pub. Um, we go into that one, we have logs, we go into that one, we have log files, and in that one we'll have this. We may have others actually, you may have a list because they can be archived, but we'll have a, a folder called w3svc1. We go into there and these are all of the logs. So you can see we've got logs here going uh, I think we've got them going way back uh, into um, yeah into 2014 December. So this is a, a sort of shortened ISO format. Um, 2014 December the 10th. So that's where we get our logs from. You can actually change the location of the log file, so you can talk to your service server administrator. But uh, I believe that's the default position for the logs. So let's look a bit further at how we explore. We can explore these logs. You can see that we can do it with Notepad, but in Workbench we can also actually explore the logs using Wireshark. So um, I have a network trace here, um, a matching network trace that matches these logs. So let's just have a quick look in this network trace. And if I choose my uh, transom profile, um, I can order this by APDU response time and that I've done it in reverse order and you can see that we've got a couple of really slow uh, responses of 29 seconds um, from this particular web server. So the web server is uh, 192.168.3.78 and here's my client IP address, uh, the .81 address. So I'm going to actually focus on this particular entry here. Uh, let's reorder back by um, frame number and I'm going to actually apply a conversation filter just to filter that out. So here we have it. We have a request uh, at 1546.01 and we have a response that actually doesn't start coming back. This is an ACK for the request. Uh, here's the uh, data coming back from the web server and you can see there's a 29 second delay. Um, and you can see that uh, here's our URI, um, etc. So we'll use that to match up in the web log. 
So now let's go back into here. Here we've got the web log. I'm just going to drag and drop Wireshark onto the uh, web log. So this is an inherent capability in Workbench that it can transform uh, an IIS web log into PCAPNG format and then uh, we can actually start to explore that. Now to do that, to do the transformation, we don't have to do anything. It's a standard component of Workbench to um, actually decode this so that uh, it produces output that makes sense. Uh, what we need to do is install um, a dissector called uh, BDS and I'll show you where to get BDS from in a second. So I've got the BDS inst uh, dissector installed so I can look at this data. Now what I can do is um, let's have a look at the time. Let's have a look at the time of the, the slow request. Now there's a couple of things to note about time timestamps in IIS logs. The first thing is by default the timestamp is always in GMT or UTC if you want to call it that. Um, it's always uh, in that universal coordinated time. I say always, actually it can be, your servers can be reconfigured to follow local time stamps, but assuming that it's, a de it's uh, just allowed to default, this will be a GMT time. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that actually the entry in the log, uh, the timestamp of this entry, is the time that the entry is written to the log. And the entry is written to the log when the response comes back, uh, when we send the response back from the server back to the client and the client acknowledges that response. So in fact, the, uh, the timestamp will be the timestamp of this packet, the acknowledgement to the data going back. So that's important. The next thing is, of course, uh, we don't have that level of granularity in our timestamps, so the timestamps are to the closest second. And uh, finally, of course, I can't guarantee that my PC trace, this trace that I'm looking at here, is time synced perfectly with my PCAP NG trace. But as they all reside in the same domain, they're going to be pretty close, so within a second or so. So you need to just bear those things in mind. You can see that I've, um, I've created a, a profile here called BDS and I importantly I have this value called time taken. Now all I did to get that was I went down here to the time taken value here, right clicked and chose apply as column. So that's how easily you can get that response time value. Okay, so uh, the time I'm interested in is around 15.46. In fact, the time I'm actually interested in is around 15.46.30, uh, this time here of this packet here. So um, you can obviously uh, use a find or a filter to do this, but I'm just going to eyeball it in this case. Um, I'm lucky in that this server is not that busy. Um, okay, so... Here we are in this area here, uh, 1546.30, so I'm definitely in the right area. Um, one thing I noticed was this is the complete URI. It's got page 76 at the end, so if we keep coming down here. So this looks like a good candidate. The next thing to check is, of course, that the client IP address is the IP address of my PC, which it is. So in fact, I could actually add that as a column, of course, to uh, help me sort things out here. Um, so that's obviously helpful as well. Um, you can see that I've got traffic from other um, PCs aside from uh, the dot 81 address. I've got these other, other client IP addresses as well. Uh, the interesting thing here, of course, is that the time taken value is 29 seconds or 29,078 milliseconds. And that matches up pretty much with the value that I have for the APDU response time in the network trace. So just to recap, we can get the uh, web logs reasonably easy from uh, the web server. 
We can open them in something like Notepad, and I could have done this analysis with Notepad, but of course it's a bit more tricky because I have to search for values. I can open the web log directly in Wireshark if I use Workbench. The timestamps are in GMT by default. The timestamp is also the time of the response uh, from the data going from the web server back to the client. So we send the data from the web server back to the client, we get an ACK, that's the timestamp uh, we have in this log. And the timestamp's only good to the closest second. And you might have uh, synchronization issues, time synchronization issues. Aside from all of those little complications, I still think this is a great source of information, particularly when we move on to uh, my next presentation, where we start to look at encrypted data. So you can imagine that if my trace here is encrypted, I'll have nothing over here of any use, and I can uh, find out what's going on by matching it up to my web log entries. Okay, so I'll catch you next time.